And uh, it's like old times. Coach Sal, John Salavanis, back with us today. How are you? I'm fine, Rick, and it is really good to see you back in that seat over there. Likewise. You know, we spent eight years together doing this, traveled all over this country. I know, and it went by like a flash. So it's good seeing you. Thank you. Uh, Ticats, Argos, this is uh, the most intense rivalry in the Canadian Football League. What did you see last week that may repeat itself this week? Well, uh, I don't want to be negative in what I'm saying, but uh, uh, <laughs> the fans need to understand why Andy always picks turnovers as one of his <laughs> uh, keys to game, game day keys. Yeah. You know, the fact is that Hamilton is minus 15 in that turnover area. And last week they had three turnovers. Now, uh, the Hamilton defense has only given up 209 points. 87 of those points have come off of turnovers. Wow. So when you look at it, that's 42% of the scoring against the defense because the offense gave them poor field position. I hope that does not happen tonight. A lot of those points weren't even with the defense on the field. You got you pick <laughs> sixes, right. yeah. fumbles, return for touchdowns, uh, block punts for touchdowns. So, uh, yeah, you just can't have that and expect to win a lot of football games. And that, it's something that, you know, it, we've been talking about it all year, harping on it. I'm sure the coaches have been making a focus on that in practice. But it's not just as easy as say, oh, we're doing, you know, what are we doing wrong? Oh, yeah, just flip that switch, and then all of a sudden there's no turnovers. It's not that not that simple. How, how is it? You think it's in their in their heads now, or it's uh, or how, how do you change your your mindset going into late in the game where a lot of these key turnovers are happening to make sure that you play a clean game? Well, you early in the year, you remember when O took his def or his entire team off the practice field, took them in the locker room, and gave them a halftime uh, speech, et, et cetera, to try to get them acclimated to the fact that we're not doing well in the second half. And we need to focus more in the second half. I think the team leaders have to really focus this week, uh, not only on the first and second quarter, but that third and fourth quarter where they've had the letdowns. And I really think they can, they can do that. You know, we talked about uh, the offense. The offense is, is what, uh, they're first in the league in number of plays executed. They're third in the league in number of yards that in the game. But they're seventh in the league in points scored. Now, that, that tells me that they have to be more conscious of the scoring opportunities and take advantage of them. Do you think it's a psychological thing at this point? You get into the red zone and it's just not happening. You know, sometimes, Rick, uh, it can be in that uh, mindset. I, I can't believe that 12 offensive guys at the same time have that mindset. I think yeah. they understand why they're on the field. And, and they really need to focus on the idea that i got to do what I do for me. I, I can't worry about what the other guy is doing. Yeah. If I take care of my position and do my job, then, then things will work out. Well, big change this week for the offense and, and the approach with Matthew Schiltz taking the reins. Dan, Dane Evans is hurt. He's not even dressed tonight. So Matthew Schiltz in at quarterback, uh, backed up by, by J, uh, J, Jamie, Newton, Jamie Newman and Jalen Morton. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the game plan with Matthew Schiltz in there? Well, I think uh, Schultz has been around this offense all year long. He understands the offense. So I don't think they make a change in the offense per se. I think he will take off with the ball maybe a little bit more uh, than what Dane Evans would do uh, in a ball game. So that adds a little bit of a doubt to the defensive side. But where I think he's got to be exceptional tonight is they're going to try to blitz him off that weak side. You mentioned that earlier. They're going to try to put pressure on that weak side group uh, of, of players. And I think he's got to be very quick to read and make his hot throws. Last week, I thought Dane was a little uh, miss uh, on throwing those uh, hotter routes where he's got that extra man coming at him. We talked about the O-line being better. Early in the year, we were concerned that the O-line was giving up too much pressure. In the last 40 consecutive drives, they have not given up a sack. Yeah. Wow. I think the Ticats are going to move the pocket a little bit more. Andy and I were talking before the game to maximize Schultz's athleticism. They'll give him some options downfield. You told me long ago that the offense is only good as the offensive line. 
it, does that play into this O-line and getting them out and, and, and making them more active and more aggressive? Well, we've got guards uh, that can pull and lead. Uh, both Revenberg and Woods Mandy are, are very good in that area. Fontana has even showed that he can get out of that center position. I'm not so sure that they'll, they'll change all of their game plan. They may put some more of that in. But I think they'll, they'll use some of that uh, jet sweep type stuff yep. and, and see if they can't uh, move players around and confuse the secondary a little bit. But, again, it's going to fall to the fact that you've got to block Ray and Davis on those ends if you're going to sprint out. So as a coach, with Matthew Schultz in there as the starter, instead of coming in as the backup, he's been, you know, he's been running hard all year long. Do you have a talk with him and, and, and about his safety a little bit, maybe about not really – laying his shoulder for that extra yard or you just let him go out there and ball is there any is there any well uh, I, I think you always and you want to caution the guy that you're smarter to slide or go out of bounds and protect yourself as a quarterback because there are 12 guys over there that would like to take you out of the ball game so you know use your common sense when you make your yardage slide get down when you get into a tough spot cover the football up and get down on the ground you know, there's nothing wrong with taking a sack when everything is a miss up front. Go ahead, peel it, and eat it, and uh, live to fight another day. What do you like about this defense, Sal? I like the whole defense. I like the secondary. I like, I like uh, County Evans on the wide side of the field. He's got eight knockdowns already this season. He's playing the wide side as well as anybody can play it. I think a delicate in the middle is playing great. Last week he got caught one time. In the one time he was up too close to the line of scrimmage, they hit the post route down the middle. He's a middle player. I think he can move sideline to sideline in the middle and, and do a great job in that area. And I, I really like Brooks uh, playing in that short side uh, halfback position. Brooks brings a lot of... Uh force into the run as well, which is which is nice to see. And you mentioned Siante Evans and uh, the outstanding uh, season he has. He has another tough matchup again this week against Curly Gittens Jr., who is the, uh, the leading receiver for the Argonauts. Um, but I think I'm on the same page as you that you got to make sh you know sh shut down the the run and the the short stuff and and let. Let the receivers challenge this defensive back and see where you stand uh, at the end of the day. You've got to like your chances with this defensive backfield. Oh, I do. And, and last week they held those two top receivers, Gittens, you mentioned, and uh, Amble, to three catches for 20 yards. So that's a great job of shutting that down. And your linebackers play into that very, very well. You've got two great linebackers on the outside that can cover wide and deep in the secondary when they need to. And you've got a tackler in Santos Knox who can come and tackle the tackle and make those big plays for you. So a lot of fans are hovering over the panic button because this team's 2-6, and six, Toronto's 4-3, and three, Montreal with a big win last night against Winnipeg. How close should we be to pressing that panic button? If you press the panic button, what do you do next? You panic. <laughs> you, you get, that's it. So, so <laughs> consequently, you don't press that button. Yeah. You stay within yourself and, and stay within the schemes that you've got. Now, you've got to make changes and you've got to make adjustments. This week, it's a receiving core, as Andy mentioned, uh, that has to make all of those adjustments. Unger going to the inside, uh, Durant and Smith, the three Canadians on the wide side of the field. But you've got to rely on those guys. Those, those are the players that are out there on the field. They'll do their job if you get the ball to them. I've been part of some great Canadian corps to the field in my days, and, uh, I, and I have a lot of faith in these guys. So what, what would your message be as a whole coming off – a loss to the Argos with the second of four games in five weeks, uh, new quarterback. What's your message to the team uh, taking the field tonight? Well, I, I think it has to go back to the fact that you're here to play, and you're here for a reason, and you're here because you're a good football player. Now get out there and prove that. Don't, don't let down. Don't think about somebody else, uh, uh, you know, uh, being injured. Think about yourself and what you've got to do to make this team go. In whatever happens, there's going to be adversity. Understand that. There will be adversity. So uh, in, in case that happens, keep your head up. Keep going in that direction. Last week we had two big adverse plays on special teams. You, you remember the one where 
uh, we take the ball on the one yard line, step in the end zone, then come out yeah. and, and put us in uh, jeopardy. On the punt team, we miss count. We don't have the proper count one, two, three, and we double one and let the other guy come in to block a punt. Those things can't happen. Those are correctable. And I think they will correct those. And those add up, and they, I mean, those two came at the worst possible time, and it just kind of snowballed in the second half, and ultimately a loss against the Argos. 